For this invention, the path to success has been bumpy and rocky, and that's the whole idea. The all-terrain vehicle was developed for off-road driving back in the 1970s. The first machines were three-wheelers, and then the safer four-wheelers came along, improving on a concept that was truly trailblazing. If you're looking for adventure, an all-terrain vehicle will get you out of a rut. All that bouncing around won't hurt a bit because the independent rear suspension takes some of the shock out of that bumpy ride. To make an all-terrain vehicle, they clamp pieces of the steel framework to a work table. The table flips and lands in a precise position for welding robots to go to work. These computerized robots do all the big welds. Humans take over for the more intricate work. Once the vehicle mainframe is complete, they hang it on an overhead rail, which takes it through a painting station. When the paint is dry, they lock it onto rails that will move it down the assembly line. They tie the radiator to it with hose. It will be attached more securely later. The steering axle for the front wheels goes in next. At the next station, they bolt the steel handlebars to the front of the vehicle. They hoist a 300cc engine into the chassis. It's suitable for beginners or smaller riders. They fit the carburetor into the engine manifold. Moving down the line, they install the suspension system for the front wheels and run the brake lines to the brake discs. They brace the suspension with a steel bracket. The extra support will come in handy when this ATV is on rough terrain. They push the outer exhaust pipe onto one that extends from the engine and hook them together with springs. They then slide the front and rear clutches onto groove shafts and connect them with a rubber belt to transmit power from the engine to the transmission. The radiator has been permanently mounted to the chassis, and they bolt the coolant tank to the framework above it. The four and a half gallon fuel tank goes between the handlebars and seat. They insert the air filter box in an opening behind the tank. This much bigger lid goes on the storage box in the front. And after a little trademark artwork, they push the instrumentation panel into place between the handlebars. Footwells made of rigid plastic flank each side of the ATV. At the next station, they mount the front grille and headlights. They screw a rack onto the back. It can be used to tie down anything from camping gear to game. Workers then press a comfy vinyl seat onto the center of the vehicle, snapping it into place. Now this all-terrain vehicle is ready for its wheels. The back ones are larger to provide that cushioning effect over the bumps, while the smaller wheels in the front provide traction and maneuverability. They apply reflector decals to the sides and back, so the ATV can be seen more easily when daylight dims. The tank has been fueled, and this ATV is ready to take a ride on the drum tester. The operator parks the wheels on a set of drums. He activates the computer, and those drums are ready to roll. The gate closes and the ATV rides on the spinning drums, reaching high speeds without actually moving. It's the perfect opportunity to test the gears, brakes, and exhaust system. The operator then gives the brakes a workout, because good brakes are critical in backwoods conditions, and it passes. From the three-wheel machine of the 70s to the flashy four-wheeler of today, the ATV continues to be popular off the beaten track. <laughs>